Hi everybody, I'm Peter Gifford and this is the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Here's the rule book. Now I'm not going to talk in detail about the game because I haven't actually played it yet. No, I'm saving it up um, because I've been wanting to do a summary for it first or a rules and reference for it first. And it is an 80 page rule book. There's a lot of stuff in here. Now I'd be happy to know that I have finished the rules and reference and it'll be available on my website at orderofgamers.com. And what I've done is I've worked very, very hard on this one. So I thought I'd make a little video about it and how to use it and also show you some of the painting I've done so far for the game. Later on down the track when I've played the game, of course, I'll be doing a full review of it and we'll be looking more at Aeon Trespass. There's so much to explore here. It's very, very dense and complex. There's a lot going on. Um, I'm really impressed actually with the level of creativity in the whole thing. It's a very unique and unusual world. So let's first talk about my rules and reference. So if you go along to orderofgamers.com, you can easily find it. And it comes in quite a few sheets. And that is because it's an 80 page rule book. And I've summarized everything in this rule book. There are no rules missing whatsoever. So once you've read this through once, put it aside because you probably won't need it anymore. You can just use my summaries. So what I've done is on the first sheet, this is a bit unusual. I don't usually do it this way, but the way this game is set up called for this approach. On the first sheet, I've got a little campaign setup thing. So you'll only use that once when you set up the first time. And then a few bits of basic information, which are good to sort of know at the start. But once you've done that, you probably won't need that sheet very much. So that's just a little starter sheet. And then we get into the sheets themselves and they come broken up into the actual phases of the game because each phase is quite complex. There's a voyage phase, an adventure phase, and a battle phase. And all of them are like games in themselves. You go on the Argo, which is a huge, bizarre kind of ship that's traveling the oceans of this weird, ancient Greek-influenced sci-fi fantasy world, um, where you know the gods are dead and the huge primordials are running over the land. So there's a lot going on in each turn. So what I've done is on the first sheet here, you'll find uh, the basic rundown of the game turn. And then the rest of the sheet is the voyage phase. So the entire voyage phase is on two sides of that sheet. Very, very handy. So you can put the other ones aside when you're playing the voyage phase. This is all you'll need. When you get onto the adventure phase, however, you'll have another sheet. This is only a single sided one. So print this out just on one single sided sheet. Everything about the adventure phase is on that sheet. Now, when you get into the battle, now I said put aside that first one, but actually the voyage phase and the adventure phase go together. So you'll need both of those. But you can put those aside when you get to the battle phase because that is obviously quite involved. And on that, we've got two sheets, both double sided, but all of the rules for the battle are on these two sheets. So when you're playing that part of the game, that's all you'll need. Super handy and so much better than flipping through an 80 page rule book. I'm sure you'll agree. Finally, we have two of these, or you can print as many of these as you want, depending how many players you have. But on one of these sheets, it's a double sided small reference sheet with all the keywords on there. So you can reference them very easily as you're playing all the keywords there with the icons and everything as well. So very easy to access as you're playing. So that's my rules and reference sheet. It actually took a long time to do. I worked pretty solidly on it for a week. So if you do go download it, can I ask you, um, think about making a little donation because uh, I do need money to keep the esoteric order of gamers going because it takes quite a lot of my personal time. So I'd really appreciate it if you consider leaving a donation. However, you don't have to, and I hope it will improve your game experience. I'm pretty sure it will in this case um, because as I said, it's a big rule book and this makes it a lot easier to play. Okay, enough of that. Let's have a look at some of the miniatures. Now, one thing about this game is that it has multiple cycles. Uh, there are three of them in the box and there's probably more to come, but each cycle is like an entire campaign. And you'll be fighting the primordials who are the main bad guys. You'll be fighting those over and over again in different situations. So you don't really have to paint up too much um, for playing the game to get started. So what I've done to start with is we have four titans here and the titans in this game are huge creatures which aren't well they're they're humanoid but they're sort of without 
their own vo volition. It's a bit hard to describe. They're like meat puppets, really, when you think about it, because the Argonauts who are on the ship, who are the players, you're playing an Argonaut, actually take control of a Titan on the battlefield because that's the only way they can fight these monstrous primordials because they're so powerful and huge. So they actually um, juncture with these Titan creatures and control them. They're like kind of battle mechs, giant robots, except they're fleshy. <laughs> it's very weird and very evocative, really interesting. So I've got four of those to get started with. They're the Dream Walkers, and I painted those up. Very easy to paint. They're just, you know, easy figures to, to, to do. The flesh color, a little bit of color on the, um, the clothes, a little bit of dry brushing. And then you'll notice the bases themselves are actually quite small in scale. So that you'll see a, um, a horse corpse or something lying on one of them, and it gives you an idea of the scale. Because of course, when you look at the Titans, they just look human sized, the size of a normal miniature. But actually, in relation to what's going on on the base, you can see that they're very, very large. So very easy to paint. And then I did these primordials, who I think, from what I've been told, are the only primordials you'll fight in the first cycle. So I haven't done this huge one yet. This is called the Alpha Temenos, and it's huge. So I've got to get onto that one. I haven't done that. But I have done these three. The first one you'll be fighting is the Hecaton, and this is the primordial you'll be fighting in the tutorial battle but then you'll be fighting it a lot more after that. And this is this weird thing made up of fists and hands. And as somebody pointed out, um, you're using your fists in the first battle of the game. And this monster is pretty much made up of fists. It's very bizarre and freaky, um, but very easy to paint. Mostly, you know, flesh color and then a bit of a uh, wash. Uh, you can wash it with something like uh, Reichland flesh or perhaps Seraphim sepia. And then just a bit of quick highlight by mixing a bit of white with your flesh color. Very easy to do. Um, then I've got this beautiful looking thing, which is called a Hermesian Pursuer. And again, it looks very weird. And then you realize the scale of it when you see that it's walking across this shipwreck at the, on the base here, and it's striding through the sea and smashing through this ship. So you can see how huge it is. And again, contrast paints are really a friend with something like this because there's so much detail on it. You can blend, wet blend the uh, co contrast paints when you're painting on the figure itself. So I've got a bit of purple there going up to blue, um, blue on the edges there, and then you can dry brush with a, a much lighter blue going up to white. And uh, very, very easy to do. This one was a little bit trickier. This is the Labyrinthosaurus, no, Labyrinthorus, Labyrinthorus, uh, which is some kind of weird mutated bull thing with tentacles and things coming over it, coming out of it. Um, again, pretty easy to paint there. Um, for this bronze metallic effect, I actually painted it in silver first, and then I painted over the silver using Gore Grunter fur contrast paint, and that gave that kind of bronze effect highlighted with a bit of silver, and then the tentacles are just sort of a purple wash with a bit of a highlight. Very easy to do. And again, dry brushing is your friend with these bases because there's all kinds of detail there. So you can just easily easily dry brush that up with a, a bit of light gray and everything and you're done. So actually these were very, very quick and easy to paint and this will get you started. You will have to paint more Titans as the game continues. And of course, I've got to paint up this beastie as well. So that's a first look at Aeon Trespass. There's lots more to come about this game. I'm really impressed with it, and I'm really looking forward to getting into it. I'm not going to play it solo to start with. I'm going to start playing it uh, as a two-player game, and then it may go into solo after that because it's such a big and involved campaign. But I've heard very, very good reports from reviews so far. Um, so yeah, we'll be getting into it. And of course, go and check out my rules and reference. And I think you'll find it very, very useful if you're playing this game. And leave a donation if you can. If you can't, don't worry. But if you can, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks very much for watching, folks. Uh, lots more to come. And I will see you soon. Good gaming. Um, please subscribe. Check out my social media channels. Check out my Patreon channel. I'll see you next time. Bye.